<laughs> All right. I'm glad we had such a celebratory first act. Um, now for something completely different. I know that's a surprise, but actually in this case though, this is not just somber for, being, for the sake of being somber. Um, on December 3rd, 1983, at two o'clock a.m., my brother, James William Holt, died um, from uh, internal wounds after a car wreck. He was 16 years old, I was 12 years old. And uh, so it's December 2nd now. And um, we went through this whole period of, I found out around 12 o'clock, I was a little punk 12 year old um, wearing my ACDC t-shirt. And uh, I found out, you know, oh my God, Jim's been in a car wreck. And I was like, oh, what the fuck? What are, we, what are you talking about? That's ridiculous. Um, he was just out partying with, you know, his like five friends in the car and they were doing drugs and everything else. And um, it's no big deal. He'll be back fucking with me here in a minute. Well, then I found out um, after my family had been in the waiting room and whatnot, no, he was really dead. So these two poems are called The Waiting Room and Silence and they're dedicated to him. This is the waiting room. This is the place where families cross their legs and stare sightless at unobtrusive art. This is the place where every minute drags like a dead body heaved onto a cart. A mother clasps her hands as if in prayer, then bows her lit head and curses quietly. A husband thinks that if he'd just seen more, his wife would not be having surgery. Death breathes upon these souls who wait in need of angels wearing scrubs to proffer grace. All wait alone and none are reassured by memories of a loved one's pleading face. In purgatory, they await the words of gods who fail as often as succeed. That's the first one, and then this one is longer. It's silence, and it's actually a sestina, if anybody knows what that is. Home wasn't safe. I learned to freeze my tears before they spilled and stow my fears away behind half-lidded eyes. I lived in darkness, accepting that when Dad demanded silence, I would stay still. You chose a different road. I'm left to mourn my stubborn older brother. You swore you wished you'd never had a brother, screaming at me when dad left you in tears. Eventually I'd trail you down the road, kicking at pebbles, searching for a way to win you back. I starved within your silence. I needed you because you shared my darkness. But you were not content to hide in darkness and did not listen to your younger brother. I hated that you wouldn't heed dad's silence. Your screams shook me as did your storms of tears. You swore so often that you'd run away, I feared you'd die helpless on a cold road. I see you on your skateboard, how you rode heedless of gravity. You flew through darkness, leaping, often tumbling, dancing away from rules and caution. You found cooler brothers, Boys with skull rings, some with tattoos of tears, who mocked our dad's suburban cave of silence. For a brief time with them, you broke your silence, flipping off cars as you flew down the road. But then you came home bleeding, sick with tears, and pummeled me as if I were the darkness. Dad heard me screaming at my older brother and came for you. You didn't turn away. The night you took mom's keys and drove away, I hated you for leaving me in silence. I didn't know that I would lose my brother to rage and alcohol and a lake road 
where rain beat down like tears of the gods in darkness. But here, tonight, as I stare through my tears, I'm with you on that road that leads away from icy tears, the path to final silence, my brother driving wildly in the darkness. Thank you.